Pega Mashik and Dejanikas, Gawa Babi Ganikat, New Enge Bayan, Maingan, Nendu Dame. I am the daughter of boarding school parents, born in Hoyt Earth at the Indian Hospital. We lived in a community of Pine Point until I was two. Then we moved to Leech Lake, where my mother is from. That is where I received my knowledge and education from my grandmother. My grandparents were second degree Madewan. My grandparents never spoke English. Therefore, my first language is Ojibwe. Our mode of transportation was by water or horse. We attended ceremonies and burials together. They taught me their way of life, but needed an interpreter when they had to speak English since we only spoke Ojibwe in our home. In fact, I never even heard the English language until I went to school. I attended a one-room school with the other neighbors. I remember being scared when I saw my first teacher. I thought she was sick and I was afraid of catching her illness. Blonde hair and light skin. I had never seen a white person before. In the fourth grade, we moved to the Pine Point Ponsford area. This is where I encountered racism and discrimination from the other students who were also native. They made fun of me because of my language barrier. I had a hard time learning how to speak English and often found myself getting slapped by the teacher because I would mix Ojibwe with my English words. As I was growing up, I remember the other students kept telling me, go back where you come from. One day I remember coming home from school, asking my parents not to speak Ojibwe to me again. They didn't. Because of this, I strayed from the tradition and the culture of that my grandparents had taught me. Many years later, I married my late husband, Andrew. He was a teacher and I loved listening to him. He taught about our culture at the high school, different organizations, the Minnesota Historical Society, the Minnesota Humanity Center, local civic groups, Gradually, he asked me to go with him, and I began to help him with these presentations. After many years of marriage, I revealed to him how I grew up and what had happened in my life. Reviving my grandmother's teachings slowly came back to me, the caring, sharing, compassion for all the people. I felt proud again. One night I had a dream. I was talking to some young girls and explaining some of the teachings that my grandmother told me about the Anishinaabe woman's role. I could hear my grandmother's voice whispering to me in Ojibwe. You need to tell them so they will know. I thought about this dream for about a week when Andy asked me what was bugging me and I told him. He said, well now you know what you have to do. I asked a couple of friends to help me with the planning for a workshop or conference. My grandmother's teachings was born and it is now five years old. We celebrate every year in the spring because everything is new. As a social worker and activist for the last 40 years, 
I have advocated for people who have no voice. The homeless, chronic alcoholic, foster children, suicide prevention, and teenage moms. These problems are around us every day on the White Earth Reservation. By helping our younger generation learn our traditions and culture, we can have more hope for our future and be more respectful of our journey.